Hate Mail Monday. It's time for Howie Carr's Hate Mail Monday. Let the hate flow through you. <laughs> this is when we check up on all the uh, fan mail, mash notes, love letters, uh, emails, texts, voicemails that we get from our devoted fan base out there in La La Land. TV land. Yes. and the we're fruited plain, as Rush Limbaugh used to say. We're offending people at all times, even when we really aren't trying to. Um, today, I would like to start with the freshest hate mail we have. This came after I mispronounced a very common word. Um, Taylor, can I have lauds, please? Because it louds wealthy white men in the nation's founding. Lauds. Now, um, someone texted in quite quickly. Jesus, Grace, take an English class, you dope. So I thought that was a nice way to kick it off, you know? Just happened moments ago. Hate mail, it's really, uh, it's always moving. Next you're, up. You're going to be busy going to night school because some people under your column in the Herald on yesterday. I saw that. Actually, we should just go to that one and clear. <laughs> you know what? We should just get all of mine out of the way right from the start. Someone wrote, um, the Boston Herald needs to hire a proofreader and send Grace Curley to a remedial English grammar course. They didn't, but they didn't say anything that was wrong with the grammar, Howie. Did you notice that? I've, I've no, that's a recurring theme. Nobody ma- made mention of a punctuation mark that was out of place. Nothing. So how can I fix it if you won't tell me what the issue is? Lods, I heard about, and I've already fixed it. Boom. Just like that. Now on to your stuff. My, now I'm officially in the clear until we get to the voicemails. Uh, Howie wrote, Charlie Baker and Joe Biden skilled at talking ragtime. Yes, I wrote a, uh, they had two press conferences. I guess it was on Wednesday, one after another. And uh, Charlie was talking about much leaded relief for the taxpayers. And, uh, and his lieutenant governor was talking about the the plan for tax relief, not tax relief, tax relief. And then Joe was, well, let's just say Joe was Joe. Well, Justin writes, poor Howie, the best this huckster can do is sift through comments to see if words are mispronounced and seize on them to write another idiotic column. Howie. I don't seize, I pounce, I weaponize. Other than your brain of idiotic followers, nobody cares. Now I see you're taking your pathetic act on the road again, along with your faithful suck-up companion. That's me, by the way, if anyone's not following. (laughs) To fleece the fools that are going to show up and buy your crappy books. You gotta love it. We'll be at uh, Nosset Beach Inn on Friday. That's on the Cape Cod National Seashore. A really great, great place to be. And I wouldn't call myself a suck-up. I would just say I'm encouraging. I'm a beat. And right now we're not selling the books. We're giving the books away. If you want to buy the books, you got to go to Amazon or Barnes and Noble or, or your local bookstore to pick up the books. Right. Right. That's an important clarification. You also wrote Sheldon Whitehouse's White House fiasco is positively Carrie-like. Care to give a brief summary of that? I said, has anyone ever seen John Kerry and Sheldon Whitehouse in the same room or at the same yacht club? Because they use the same, they, they're both from uh, Yale. They're both from St. Paul's School in Concord, New Hampshire. They, they both have Yankee bloodlines back to the uh, Mayflower. They, neither of them have had a, ever had a real job. It's the only choice for somebody like me. And uh, they use the same excuses. You know, I mean, when uh, when Kerry got busted for having the five SUVs in the 2004 campaign, he said his wife owned, his his second wife's first husband's trust fund owned the SUVs. And now Sheldon Whitehouse is busted for belonging to the Clavern on, uh, on the Bay. And uh, he says, oh, my wife is a member. I gave my wife that membership, so I don't have anything to do with that gentleman's agreement. So they, they use the same excuses. This guy says, yeah, says the guy who's a member at Mar-a-Lago, you can't make this bleep up. You're a dead ringer for Billy Bulger circa, 20, circa 2021. Well, I've been accused of that before, but I mean, has, the, has Mar-a-Lago ever been accused of, uh, I mean, they've been accused, but not Mar-a-Lago. credibly. Grace, uh, the first time you met uh, 
President Trump at Mar-a-Lago, who was he having dinner with? Oh, he was having dinner with Don King. Don King, who has been accused of murder twice. Once he shot a guy in the back who was trying to rob his gambling house, and then he, later on he stomped one of his employees to death. Yeah. So, when, so, so, do you think Sheldon Whitehouse has ever invited a uh, a, a a black guy in a dashiki who uh, who's been charged twice with uh, with killing somebody and actually served time for the second one, stomping his employee to death? Do you think he's ever had somebody like that to dinner? I don't know. At but one of his uh, one of his clan clubs. A fun fact is that actually after we had that dinner and I met Donald Trump, I called my dad afterwards and I said, yeah, he was sitting at a table with Melania and some other guy. I had to kind of, I felt bad. I had to kind of sidestep that guy to get to the president. And my dad said, oh, well, who was the other guy who's having dinner with? And I said, some guy named Don King. And my dad said, <laughs> Don King? And I said, yeah. And he goes, and you just, you didn't say anything to Don King? I said, no, I didn't know who he was. But I had a feeling he was some sort of famous person because he had a bedazzled denim jacket on at Mar-a-Lago. I thought it was a dashiki. No, I remember a denim jacket. But you know what, Howie? Everyone has their own memories of things. Um, All right, so let's get to some of these voicemails before we go back. 617 says, whatever you think about Howie's books, Plug Uglies is good just for the mug shots alone. Thank you. Thank you. How about the police reports in there from the Irish gang wars and the Pl- Great Plymouth uh, mail, uh, mail truck robbery? See, you never know what's going to upset people. Sometimes it's our writing, sometimes when we mispronounce things, but sometimes it's Howie's appetite. Howie, you mentioned, I think it was probably Aviva Trattoria, that you were going to order veal, and this guy was not happy about it. Cut one, please, Taylor. What kind of person are you? I just heard you say you might have veal palm later on tonight. Don't you know that they keep those cows in little cages? If you have veal palm, I'm never listening to you again. Rebuttal? I guess he's not listening. I, I brought. I have some in the refrigerator left, the leftovers, Grace, if you'd like to have some for dinner before you leave tonight. I'm not against having veal. I, I have had it before, but I understand why some people don't partake. You know, he asked me, why did you say you were going to have veal parm tonight from Aviva Trattoria? I'll tell you why. Because I was hungry. Yeah, and you were having it. You don't lie about it. You're not going to say, oh, I'm going to have a salad and then go eat veal. Right. I never understood the outrage over veal. It's the cow's dead either way, whether it's old or young. Right. <laughs> what, what does it matter? I think it's because people see a baby cow and it makes them sad. Really, and I do more, get that. It's more inhumane to let the cow believe that it's going to live a full life. <laughs> that it's going to collect <laughs> social security. <laughs> it's, it's, cut, <laughs> cut them down when they're young. Get the suffering over with. Th- there's a point to be made there. It's like, what's I can't the... wait for that PETA ad with well, my voice to air. <laughs> what's the book, Charlotte's Web? About that... the spider. Yeah, but about the pig. I think the pig was a bigger character in it. Charlotte had the web, but the pig was the one Wilbur. who was going to die. Yeah, and Wilbur, I mean, he really thought, he probably thought he was he was going to live forever. They let him get real old. Um, all right, let's play, speaking of Taylor, now that he's chimed in, let's play cut four. I can't believe Taylor on Friday getting caught on a hot mic saying that pugs are as much a member of the dog species as Peter Lawford was a member of the Rat Pack. What a jerk. Maybe his nickname should be Taylor Not So Swift. Did you say that? That's really bad. Peripherally speaking, it's shame. True. shame. Shame. I never said that. Sounds like something <laughs> you would say. <laughs> Come I've got, on, I've got man. nothing against pugs. Oh, okay. Well, we'll let that one slide. Um, let's also play. Sometimes people make an attempt to be angry, but something about the day, they just don't have it in them. This is cut three. Hey, Howie, I know how you could have uh, um, made your, um, uh, the, um, uh, uh, was uh, it Joe Biden? He Joe tried. Biden called in? He tried his best. By the way, everyone, Hate Mail Monday <laughs> is brought to you by Piantadozzi Baking Company, celebrating over 100 years of baking excellence since 1916. I love Piantadozzi bread. I eat it all the time. I had a loaf of it this weekend with some pasta, some meatballs. If you see Piantadozzi I'm bread... I'm still working on my uh, French bread from last week. Isn't it so delicious? And you know what it's great with? What? Veal parm. Oh. <laughs> you're really trying to... You're oh, never, never mind. You're never going to get that listener back now, sir. Um, also, Howie, 
you tweeted out the photo of the Baker news alert or the Baker COVID tracing alert on your phone. Yes, it's still here if you want to see it. This person writes... Taylor didn't take it off. Um, elderly radio guy waves his cane at phone. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it is a little bit what you were like, somebody come get this get this message on my phone am i the only am i the only one who's who said doesn't like this exposure logging get off my lawn (laughs) exposure (laughs) notifications available who asked you get notified of possible exposure to COVID 19 by massachusetts department of public health who's gonna who's gonna let me know sonia farrak or uh, Annie Ducan. Grace, can you get that off? Can you disable that feature? I'm no good with iPhones. I'm waving my cane. <laughs> can you disable that feature? For um, me, another person says, Governor Baker saved lives. Howie Carr ran to Mar-a-Lago as fast as he could. You're a fraud. Well, half of that is right. I did run to Mar-a-Lago as fast as I could, but Charlie Parker didn't save any lives. Did you read the follow-up to the Globe story about the uh, Holyoke uh, Soldiers Home investigation this weekend? Now it turns out not only did Charlie Parker lie, but the uh, Pearlstein, the lawyer, who uh, said that he ha- hadn't uh, talked to uh, Charlie Parker and uh, pay to play Polito, he misspoke. He forgot. Well, you can tell that to at Burgers Are Us. I have a feeling he's not doing any of that kind of reading. Um, lastly, before we go, once again, Hate Mail Monday brought to you by Piantadosi Baking Company. Let's play one more hate mail. Cut five, please, Taylor. Hey, Howie, you are a pathetic loser, just like Trump. Yep, he's going to ramble on and on for the next 20 years. How do you stay on the air? Not a Democrat in the world is going to listen to your crap. By the way, my sister-in-law loves you. All right, so I think... As long as I get one out of two, that's all I care about. We should be so lucky that Trump lives another 20 years. (laughs) I hope he does. I hope he does. I just want to say, after last week's hate mail, I think that was sufficiently vicious. For all of us. So no one can complain that it wasn't vicious. They'll enough. still complain, but I just want to put that out there. Thank you, Howie. You can almost make a new word. Sufficious. Sufficious. A lot of us. Vicious. A lot of us are going to be on the move again this summer. So my advice to you is take your Raycons with you. Are you taking your Raycons with you next week, Grace? Well, actually, Howie, I'll be driving you to the Cape this week. And I was going to suggest that you take your Raycons with you. I thought we'd listen to the Mothers of Invention going down. You know, I Hungry think, Freak's Daddy. I, ugh, I think we'll do a duel. You listen to your stuff, I'll listen to my stuff. I'll, I'm going to have control of the car. You can listen whatever you want on those Raycons. Whether you're going to the beach or you're going to the, uh, to the lake, whether you're going to work or to a workout, a pair of Raycon wireless earbuds in your ear can make all the difference. Whether you like... Uh, uh, Alan Sherman, like uh, like Taylor does, or uh, Frank Zappa and the Mothers of Invention, like I do. You get crisp, powerful beats at half the price of other premium audio brands. Raycons look great and feel even better. They come in a range of cool colors and with customizable gel tips included for a comfortable in-ear fit. And Raycons are built to go wherever you go with quick and seamless Bluetooth pairing and a compact charging case. Another great thing about Raycons is they have a 24-hour battery life and portability. That means uh, you probably aren't going to need to recharge them all weekend long, but it's easy to do if you have to charge them. Go uh, go and get some Raycons. Uh, you can order them up right off the offline online, and uh, you will have them with you very soon. And they're an absolute must-have as you go through this uh, wonderful summer that we're now in. Listen up, Raycon's offering 15% off all their products for my listeners, and here's all you've got to do to get it. Go to buyraycon.com slash Howie. That's 15% off at buyraycon.com slash Howie. Buyraycon.com slash Howie. I'm Howie Carr. He's making talk radio great again. He's Howie Carr.